welcome to Seeds Expert Talk Solution Series. I'm Suti Ru. Cities drive economic opportunity and deliver more than 80% of the global GDP. At the same time, cities are also exposed to and are on the front line of response to health risks. The global pandemic from COVID-19 revealed the vulnerabilities of cities due to their dead infrastructure and living conditions, resulting in high exposure to infectious diseases. Today, Bruce Jong from Arup will discuss what Southeast Asia can do to cities' net zero transition. So thank you for being part of the expert talk solution uh, today, Bruce. Um, Bruce, uh, you know that um, city uh, now they try economic development, but at the same time, they also face a lot of challenges, right? Yes. And people start talking about you know net zero, carbon neutral, um, city resilient. So what does um, resilient city really mean for Southeast Asia? Well, there are multiple meanings for resilience, basically. Uh, if you need to take a systemic approach, basically on resilience, we need to think about an overall governance, uh, the institutional setup um, to achieve resilience. Um, resilience means basically from social, economical, as well as physical infrastructure. So we need to take care of you know all different aspects. And bear in mind that for Asia, uh, we are sort of the climate taker, it's not the climate maker. So we are basically subject uh, to the carbon emissions that create the climate hazard and the consequences that we are now facing. For example, we have to face flooding, we have to face um, extreme wind, extreme temperature. So we are actually taking the consequences of greenhouse gas emissions. This, I think we, we need to take action at this um, by addressing that carbon needs to be reduced by on the 50 and then at least a target as an aspirational direction needs to be set out otherwise people will not make a serious endeavor uh, to achieve this target at least we need to have the target and then push the industry and also both public and private sector um to think about what type of innovation technologies across you know multiple sectors from building transport um to industry to power sector because it's not only carbon removal, it's also about the ecosystem, the nature that we are conserving. So apart from those technologies, our forestry, our land use, um, our carbon sink are also crucial uh, to achieve carbon neutral down the road. But based on our experience, you know, extensive experience in helping the government, private sector in building um you know, resilient city, perhaps not only Southeast Asia, but across the world. But uh, what would be the most effective digital innovation or technology that can help government, uh, you know, to advance the journey to net zero? Yeah, I think early success and also some good pilot exemplar project uh, in some of the um, cities when they, you know, roll it out, the early success and the case can be taken as a lesson learned for other government cities um, and also about the scale up of you know, the overall uh, operation of the city, talking okay, about using the IoT, um, ICT communications uh, to achieve data monitoring um, and of course relating to energy and transport, etc. So um, one also the enabling factor is about you know those digital twin that actually virtual people to visualize um, the city and do the data analytics for future you know, monitoring and analytics. But um, on that point, um, how, how do smart city or smart technology can help improve urban res resilience? Can you provide some concrete examples? Yeah, um, for example, those sort of um, top tier leading cities like in Asia, Singapore, in Hong Kong, the government set out the common data infrastructure for different departments to share the information and then people from both OPE, academia and also petitioner, the means of this data um, to do further urban informatics analytics. So this is quite helpful in understanding the city dynamics as well as in the long run to keep monitoring the energy, the resources used and support circular economy. So technologies, uh, digital innovation, maybe all are there, but how can Southeast Asian countries leverage those? Uh, to improve their uh, urban resilience. I think um, incentive, um, carrot and sticks, and also a partnership 
with different tech companies and SME and also collaboration within um, the government is also important. Um, well, I have told um, and also through our, our projects that individual governments or individual companies, they already set out some sort of um, startup platform to collect and collate all the information. Now, this is sort of the first step. The second step would be the interlink of all different data platforms so that people can synchronize their data information, more sharing and uh, more transparent among all you know, different key players in the cities. Like people can understand oh, what would be the electricity consumption or water consumption, gas conductions, uh, consumptions um, on the different sectors. You know, we, when we have more information, we can have a you know, um, a deep understanding and then related measures and um, the actions can be set up more accurately and appropriately. You mentioned about um, cooperation, integration. How about at the policy level? So what kind of policy environment that enable our um, general urban resilience? Yeah, well, it's uh, the most paramount important that, you know, the policy framework, not only for the public sector, private sector, how to encourage and also push them um, to disclose both on carbon and also climate risk through, you know, more digital, more autonomous, more automatic way um, is, you know, one key thing that could help, you know, all together um, to cut emissions as well as improve climate resilience. Um, a lot of international framework like um, what we call TCFD or Science Space Target or IS ISSP, right, uh, have already been pushed by like a stock exchange and policy maker um, like in Hong Kong again, in Tokyo, in Singapore, for all those private sector, they need to do mandatory uh, disclosure on carbon. Okay, um, so I, I think I would wrap up with this question because uh, we talk a lot about, you know, uh, deadline, carbon neutrality, uh, city resilience. So the deadline is there in 2050, right? Yes. So from your point of view, how close we are to the deadline? Well, in East Asia or Southeast Asia context, uh, I think we still need to make a lot of endeavor. Um, the carbon budget global level is around 300 billion and at each year at the global level basically um we will emit around 40 billion something so we only have around eight to nine years if we don't change anything uh, to use up all the carbon budget so in asia uh if we you know don't change drastically uh if we don't have any systemic change then basically we will um we will not you know follow the 1.5 degrees Celsius pathway. Um, so we need to have, you know, more transformational, revolutional, revolutionary change in terms of our production, uh, our manufacturing and pay up on, you know, those core technologies like the uh, renewable energy, electric vehicle, electrification on the transport um, and, and, and industry sector, etc and a large cut in building sector as well. So we need to, you know, uh, still uh, 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 have a lot of things um, to catch up. Okay. Okay, Bruce. Thank you so much thanks for joining us today. Okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for joining us for this episode of Seed Experts Talk Solutions. I'm Sutia. Goodbye.